Not looking so hot today, folks. It's almost noon on the East Coast, and we have all the indexes in the red. We have the NASDAQ down 0.6%, the Russell's down 0.9%, the Dow and the S&P, they're down each three quarters of a percent as the VIX is up over 6%. So in this video, we're going to break down the markets very briefly. We'll take a glance at what's going on, and we're going to focus on five stocks in particular that I'm looking at right now as trades. So if you all find value, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe. We're almost at 30,000 subs guys feel free to follow me on twitter or i guess x now as well i've been getting way more active over there so make sure you guys go follow me if you want it's down below or just go on twitter or x and type in stas surface or stas talk stocks i'll pop up my account's verified make sure to go follow me on there guys and with that being said cheers let's dive right into the video so like i said guys we're about two and a half hours into the session it's almost noon here on the east coast and we have all of the index as well continuing the selling that they've been seeing you guys can see if i pull up this 20 day chart or even the 10 day chart actually uh the 20 day it's been selling off more than just 10 days now we can see spy has been selling off all of august and now we're pretty much right smack dab in the middle of august uh it's the 15th right now so spy has been selling off all month and actually the sell-off started in the end of last month same thing here i believe uh with triple q let me see here yeah this started selling off actually uh before spy did this was selling off from the middle of july you guys can see it's pretty much been a month straight now of selling on triple q and with today's 0.5 percent red day so far it is now down five and a half percent from the recent highs as spy is down let's see here from the recent highs let me see here guys about uh 460 to where we are now 444 we are down about 3.2 percent uh, from recent highs and it looks like we're not showing any sign of a reversal to the upside quite yet and uh, looks like the downtrend is still intact in the short term so with that being said we might as well just dive right into these stocks guys with the first one being shopify and some of these are more oversold than others but this one man holy crap is really oversold this was at 68 bucks just in the beginning of this month and now we're at 55 bucks per share as of right now and i'm filming and mind you right now it's actually down another 80 cents it's down 1.5 percent so far on the day so in the past you know two weeks calendar you know 14 calendar days it is down 20 percent essentially it's gotten itself in a bear market and i believe it was already in a bear market uh let me double check though uh, let's pull it up here on the four hour yeah i think it was already in a bear market because the all-time high is way higher yeah way higher than where we are now it's at 176 so it was already in a bear market and it's gotten itself in another one over the past uh two weeks so we can see here shopify is very oversold and we're arguably seeing look down here at the uh, rsi guys we have an uh what's what's that called i'm blanking a bullish divergence forming slowly on shopify here arguably um you know we just have to wait and see if the candles end up following we have the rsi starting to break uh, but this it's been flat pretty much the past couple of days in the mid 50s and mind you we're still under the moving averages on the four hour chart we have a death cross and we're at the bottom of this channel as well as you guys can see uh, so in my opinion this although yes it's down 20 percent plus recently it's getting destroyed uh, it's still holding the channel it's still holding an uptrend in the grand scheme of things here on the four hour chart all we have to wait for is well the confirmation of the breakout which we're not really seeing that quite yet again we're down on the day right now when i'm making this video so keep your eyes on it in the mid 50s guys i'm actually going to set my alert at let's say 57 i'm going to put it there and see where it goes mark is at or above 57 bucks and we'll see if it does start to pop off of the bottom of that channel so that's number one number two is crm who's set to report earnings later this month you guys can see they're on the 30th i believe let me double check uh yeah on the 30th after the bell is when they're set to report and this stock is now down from 238 to 210 right now which is roughly 12 percent so it's not anywhere near a bear market but it is in correction territory right now and the last couple of days as you guys can see here on the five day five minute one two three four uh, and today being the fifth, arguably, well, we'll see how you know it does in the next couple of hours. But either way, these past couple of days, we've been consolidating and actually starting to slowly 
bounce to the upside, right? You can see today being Tuesday, right? Yesterday, Monday, we ended up uh, taking out the highs from, you know, a couple of days from last week, which is great. And this morning we tried breaking out again, but we failed. Actually, we saw the pullback, uh, you know, intraday here. Now we're starting to bounce back up. So if we could end up taking out, let's say in the very short term, to maybe 1250 let me actually put one alert there right now to 1250 if we can break that point guys momentum can start to build up even more on crm and looking here on the four hour chart if we do break above let's say uh 217 as well which might not happen until after earnings or who knows we do have two weeks until earnings maybe we get that move before uh but if we do break 217.50 which is the 180 sma on the four hour chart here that could be a spot where you know, we start to take off again, maybe to the top of this channel as this, along with Shopify, like I said, Shopify's holding trend. This is also holding an uptrend in the grand scheme of things. As you guys can see, it's just a little bit more oversold. Uh, our size starting to break. So let's see if we do see a run on um, CRM. Let's see if volume starts picking up, heading into earnings. There's a lot of things that I'm looking for right now. Another one that I'm looking at here is LYV, which is Live Nation. Uh, this is down from 100 bucks recently to about, what, 87 now. Looks like they reported earnings, which I forget what they reported. Did we even cover them on this channel? I'm not even sure, uh, but we can look at them now. It looks like they did EPS of a dollar two versus 63 cents, so they beat on that by a long shot, 40 cents, guys. Guys, and they beat on sales $5.63 billion versus $4.95 billion expected. So they crushed EPS, crushed on revenue. They have over 117 million tickets sold year to date for Live Nation shows, which is up 20% year over year. That's really good. Clearly, there's a lot of demand, uh, you know, coming out of those pandemic years, right? And JP Morgan maintains overweight on Live Nation, raises price target to 115. It looks like Rosenblatt. Uh, adjust price target to 115, maintains buy rating, Oppenheimer outperform rating, TD Cohen raises price target to 120. So it's interesting, right? Double beat EPS revenue. I'm not seeing anything on guidance, uh, but double beat. They, they ended up selling, uh, you know, 117 million tickets year to date, which is up what 20% year over year. All these analysts are putting buy targets or uh, buy ratings. They're up in there. Uh, price targets for the most part, and the stock is freaking collapsing. Why is that happening? Well, it's unexplainable a lot of the times, guys. The stock market does do mysterious things, but the way I'm looking at it is, all right, we probably just got way oversold into earnings, or overbought, rather, into earnings. Uh, went from 65 bucks back in the beginning of May all the way to 101 by the end of July. We're talking not, not, not even three months. The stock ran up uh, 50 over 50%. So it needed to cool off a little bit. We got the cool off. The dust is starting to settle now. Those, those earnings, guys, were about two weeks ago, almost three weeks ago. So this is what I like to look for, right? Good earnings a pullback, the dust to settle, and look for a re-entry point. Well, not a re-entry point because I wasn't in this, but an entry point, or at least that's kind of uh, what I'm doing, right? The earnings came out pretty good. Dust is settling. We're consolidating. The stock's actually up on the day right now, 1.4%. We're just waiting for the full breakout, or at least that's what I'm doing, guys, which will be anywhere above, I'd say, uh, 90 bucks. If this could break 90 bucks, I think a reversal to the upside, a hard, you know, strong reversal could be in the cart. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments on Live Nation. And by the way, have you gotten your free stocks yet from Moomoo? If not, use that link down below. The clock is ticking, guys. Once you open up your account and funnel with at least 100 bucks, you get five stocks each up to $2,000 right off the bat. And listen to this, guys. Once you fund your account at least $1,000, you get 10 more stocks totaling 15 stocks again each up to $2,000. $2,000 and it gets even better on top of those 15 stocks. If you want to fund your account at least $5,000 for a limited time, you also get a free share of either Tesla stock, which right now I think is uh, 250 a share or Expedia stock, which is right around a hundred bucks a share. So what are you waiting for? Get on it. The promo is limited time. Again, use that link down below. And of course that is an affiliate link. It helps out the channel. I appreciate you all as always. And with that being said, folks, cheers. 
Let's talk about the next two stocks here, which the first of the two is JP Morgan, JPM, which now is getting pretty oversold, not crazy oversold, uh, but it is down eight bucks from the recent highs, about five and a half percent. We peaked at 159, which for sure was way, way too hot. It got way overbought. Uh, now we're starting to cool off again. And notice we had this triangle that we called out, by the way, not to toot my own horn, uh, but we called that out. We had that triangle play out, and that's when we saw that run to 160 pretty much. And now we're starting to cool off back towards uh, the resistance of that triangle, which was anywhere from 145 to 146. Uh, and to be honest, guys, I'm looking to see if buyers do come in or or if we just get consolidation around 145, 150, uh, you know, right around that, that, that high, which was a high on JP Morgan all year pretty much up until the middle of July, which was just a month ago. Uh, so if we do get a, you know, a pullback even further uh, to 145, 148. I'm going to be looking very closely at JP Morgan uh, as a swing trade, even here at the 180 SMA at 150 bucks. It's uh, it's looking pretty decent, guys. And the last one for the video, folks. And by the way, if you stuck till the end, I appreciate you all as always. You're awesome. This is one that is not really showing any consolidation or reversal quite yet. Kind of similar uh, to JP Morgan, but it's very beaten down. Airbnb is now down $25 and it hasn't seen a green day. Uh, maybe Maybe, maybe one green day in the past, what, two weeks, uh, which is nothing. It's down 15% from 155 now to 130, and we are under the moving averages here, which is something worth noting. Uh, but still, overall, in the grand scheme of things, I know this is going to look pretty ugly, but, you know, we're still holding overall trend, right? You guys see that on the four-hour chart, so I'm thinking... A reversal could be in store. We're not seeing it yet. It's, it's down on the day. Keep that in mind, guys. Uh, but <clears throat> a reversal could be seen, in my opinion. If this gets to 125, 128, heck, even here at 130, guys, it is possible. So Airbnb is getting very beaten down. It's uh, it's oversold for sure, and I'm just waiting patiently for that confirmation, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. So with that being said, folks, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe and to check out my Patreon. If you guys want to see me build out my private Patreon portfolio, you get access to all the moves in that portfolio every single week, how it's doing, full transparency, the buys, the sells, what I'm holding, the percentages, all that good stuff. If you want to be a part of that portfolio and the Patreon, Patreon in general with all the other perks that it has. It's a pretty good deal in my opinion at least. I don't know. What do you guys think? Check it out. Link down below and uh, yeah, with that being said I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.